So we're here at Oshkosh 2024 and uh, like we had announced on our website and uh, some of the pre-show uh, information uh, for the first time we're introducing the electric Zenith here at Oshkosh and when I say we it's really not Zenith specifically but it's a uh, Tim bridge with nun cats and this is a CH750 cruiser that uh, Tim has put together in the UK and then uh, and they've been flying it for the past year and uh, we were fortunate that they were able to bring it to uh, Oshkosh and display it for the very first time so uh, Tim tell us a little bit about this project um this is about an exercise in what battery electric vehicles can do yeah this it's a utility airframe everyone knows that uh, why we're doing it really is because there's a lot of developing world use cases where 5, 10, 5, 10, 20 miles over the ground is a real problem. It's underneath what the sort of big charities with certified aircraft do, but it's too far to do on your own feet or with a motorbike because river deltas and jungles and valleys exist. So in that context, the capability of battery, battery electrics really limited endurance, but how long does it take to do 10 miles over the ground at 90 miles an hour? So the time to start is now so what we've done is build it essentially as two parts there's the electric power unit the epu which is the motor the drive the cooling system the looms the safety systems all that stuff and the batteries which are a little heavier than they would otherwise be because they're bolted in and on plugs which means the first generation batteries you're talking you'd plan for 40 45 minutes in the cruise once you're at pattern altitude and that gives you a bit of a reserve not 30 minutes day VFR but you know you've a reasonable experimental reserve um, but the gen 2 batteries we're now looking at will be a big improvement over that again and because it's on plugs and bolts we can have the gen 1 batteries back we'll repurpose them into solar microgrids and all the early adopt adopters yeah. get the mark 2 batteries at cost so we've got that route to continually upgrade right. the batteries because that's the limiting part the motors the drives and everything else is mature technology we just integrated it in a way that suits this airframe yeah and i and i anticipate for the next uh 10 15 20 years we'll see continuous improvement in battery technology but that said it's nice to see that right now you've got something that actually works yeah well you say so yeah i mean i think the the progression in cell technology won't be linear you know it, there'll be there'll be plateaus and troughs but it'll keep going up um so the, the ones we're putting in the batteries for next year are 40 percent better than the ones we've got in here now and the ones that we've got on the bench that are sort of being tested at an individual level we won't be able to package them up before 2027 but that's probably another 50 percent again exactly so, you know, yeah the, the route to get to sort of 90 minutes towards two hours yeah, within a few years is certainly there yeah um and yeah this is just the starting point because it's now ready to be useful in those few niche cases and we can use the first five or six of them that we supply into this market to support the one we want to send to the first field trials which is five miles across a river delta in senegal in so, senegal right yeah, yeah, yeah. um so yeah, it's, it's all about tying, you know, not just the, the sport flyers, but these, in the UK, we've got one of these, which is a student build project. And we've had a lot of interest from high schools. Build slot number two was booked by a STEM program in Indiana. Um, so we can have high schools here sharing their learning with the international school in Dakar, who are sharing what they've learned with the University of Kathmandu. We can build, you know, a, a pretty diverse network of a, a genuinely sustainable way of using these for everything they can do in those important use cases while also just being a different way of doing it over here for fun. Exactly. With Zenith, uh, we've always invited and encouraged uh, innovations on the power plant side. You know, we we really call ourselves a firewall back company in the sense that the firewall forward, we really leave that up to the customer, whether it's auto conversions, uh, you know, any, anything else, a lot of the newer yep. generation engines and so forth. 
and this is obviously the the newest of the of the new generation style engines mm. um well but we're here at oshkosh you know experimental aircraft association so you know this exemplifies that in many ways uh, experimental yet proven at the same time um what about you know for u.s consumers u.s customers how how do they get how do they benefit from this well uh directly uh, we're now because we've still got some production engineering to do so we haven't exactly fixed the price um, or we haven't exactly fixed the, the the data sheet spec for the batteries we're not taking firm orders because I'm partly because we're a social enterprise and partly because right um, auti of, well I'm autistic enough to hate the concept of over promising and under delivery right, I'm just not gonna do it right so right. what we're doing is taking small refundable deposits to build up a, a, a queue so we're booking build slots so that when we fix the price and when we know exactly what the battery spec is, we're just going to call everyone in the order they join the queue and go, yeah. this is the spec, this is the price, you can call it off and we'll build you one or you can stay in the queue and wait for the next batteries. And um, uh, so, so a customer, they can start building a Xena 750 Stoll, 750 Cruiser, something like that. And then when they're ready yep. for an engine, um, in a year or two, you should be in a, really in a position to really oh, be able to deliver yeah. that, I mean, right? the, fir the first five, I, I think looking at people's schedules, I want to deliver at least two of them at Oshkosh next year. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The others are just their longer builds. You know, they're people who aren't going to be ready right, by right. then. So it's it's really something that is readily available in, uh, in you know in the in the in the foreseeable future. Yeah, very much so. And where you're not you're not promising something that that uh, you may or may not be able to deliver on. We no, know the technology yeah. this is, is there. What, this is exactly why and, we weren't uh, here last year because we weren't going to turn up until it had bugs right. on the wings and mud on the tires. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Wonderful. It's also why we didn't clean it, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, the only thing that, from as you say, you're a, a firewall aft company. Of course, the only difference is to keep the CG exactly sure. where the design is. We've got batteries in the wings where the fuel tanks would right. be. So there is a small mod to the fuel tank bay. But when we built this one, we deliberately built the wing as you would for a gas motor and then did the mods. So if you were retrofitting, um, you can do all the mods you need with the wings on. It, it's a oh, bit nice. fiddly, but, yeah. but it can be done because yeah. I've, I've yeah. done it and only scraped my knuckles a little bit. Um, routing the, the high voltage cables under the seats would be easier if you do it while you're building, but it's certainly not impossible on a completed aircraft. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much a normal firewall forward replacement kit and you just need to find space for our EPU display, which is a 4.3 inch screen yeah yeah other than that free choice of avionics the same as with any other motor so it really will be uh, offered as a full you know what we call firewall forward package and and, and of course that includes the fuel system and so yeah, forth. yeah because even with gas engines you know you got fuel injected versus non fuel yeah, injected yeah. header tanks no header tanks Safe. there there are a lot of different configurations yeah. of that so this would be really no different yep and uh, so yeah we you need that isn't the effort, we really yeah. look forward to, uh, to to seeing this develop I know we've already been uh, even from Xena standpoint as soon as we talk about it we get we get get some people that come out of the woodwork and and uh, and again this is experimental aviation we get a lot of forward-thinking people that that want to be able to benefit by the new technologies and that you know and I love your banner saying you know this is, does not have long-range airplane this is a uh, you know it's this is for the future and uh, so uh, yeah it, and, it, make a start now with what you can grow from there people are coming to us pretty regularly now with really interesting use cases we don't think of and exactly. yeah that, that's that's why we're here so well see what people can do with it yeah yeah that's exciting for us thanks tim um and thanks for sharing Pleasure information on it and uh, and i'll continue in addition to this video in the future continue anytime updates coming whether it's new battery technology new use applications mm -hmm. new solar charge hangers things like that yep. uh really we're uh, something we can we can develop uh, uh really a, a foothold in that part of the industry yep well the first job for this is when she gets home mm -hmm. we're gonna uh, put the doors on, do all the aero mods to clean her up as much as possible, redo the last four flight test cards exactly the same as we did in the high drag configuration. So that'll give us really good data on what a clean one looks yeah, like yeah. rather than the sort of bush spec. And then, yeah, after that, it's bring this one up to Mark 1 production spec, and that'll inform the final cost and the final spec sheet that we go out to customers with very early next year, if, if not this side of Christmas. Very good. Thank you, Tim. Thank you.